It's my last day in Tunisia. Today I want to take you with me around the old Medina of Tunis and I want to show you some of my favorite spots because though I've been here for a while and I spend a good amount of time just strolling around the old Medina, this is the first time where I really grab my camera and film inside the Medina. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite spots, whether it's coffee shops, terraces, or really just places of interest that I think you'll enjoy when you are in Tunis. Let's go. This right here is one of my favorite streets in the Medina. It's right around the corner from uh, the hostel where I'm staying. This is, I think, the only youth hostel in the Medina. It's called Hostel La Medina. And right around the corner is actually this street with two of my favorite cafes in the Medina. There's a Cafe Hamouda Besha and Cafe Driba. And what I really like about these two cafes is that one of them, it's full of young people. It's always the case, which I find very interesting about the old Medina. I'm used to old Medinas being like more conservative, like older people, but it's not the case here in the old Medina of Tunis. So one of them, they're always young people just gathering towards the end of the night playing music together which is always fun to see and then the other cafe next to it used to be actually uh, a printing house here in the old Medina so every business in the Medina if they need anything printed like business cards or posters they would go right there all of the businesses it's really cool because you can still see all of the tools that were used for printing right there and one of my favorite things to get there when I go and sit down is some mint tea with the nuts because here in Tunisia when they serve their mint tea, they add either pine nuts or almonds and it really adds to the flavor. So this is the main street here. On this next street, this is one of the beautiful mosques here in the Medina. This one is called the Hamouda Besha, is the name of this mosque. And then all the way behind it is Masjid Zaytuna, which is much more popular here. There's also this uh, indoor walkway where there are a bunch of cafes or places to grab breakfast in the morning. It's pretty neat. But I actually just met a gentleman who offered to show me another neat spot. This is the place I actually have been here, but I forgot the location. So I'm so glad that, I, that the gentleman helped me to, to get here. Sultan Palace. Okay, so this place is called Sultan Palace. They do sell a lot of things, but what's interesting about this spot is that you can make your way all the way up to the terrace. Okay. Okay. Salam. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so they have some photos all the way up there with some of the presidents who visited the area and it just pointed to uh, Mohammed said he's the king of Morocco. And what's interesting about this place is that they have a really nice terrace with a wonderful view and it's actually the case in many stores here in, uh, in Tunisia and actually all around the country you just don't know <laughs> you walk into a store maybe they sell carpets just like they do here but when you are in the terrace it's just an impeccable view so let's check it out Sing it. Ah, nice nice <laughs> very nice <laughs> Okay. We have a gem al Hentetti. You have seven mosques. Ah, we have a gem al gem al We have a gem al al Cathedral Catholic. Ah, we, yeah. We do tour. 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 We do yeah, the view from up here is impeccable, especially if you make your way uh, up here during uh, sunset or for the sunrise, it's just beautiful. And uh, this place, it's there isn't really a cafe for you to sit down and enjoy the view, but uh, right next to it, there are a few cafes. Actually, I've been to that one all the way there, and it's really awesome. Two women on the left, Sultan in the middle. <laughs> 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 هذه كانت دار دار السلطان سلطان هذا يا هو محمد الامين اخر واحد 1957 هكا لي باي دو تونس هذا اول واحد 1705 جوسكا 1957 لانديبوندونس سي فيني لي لي زوتومان سي فيني لو باي لا تونيزي ريبوبليك اخر باي اخر باي محمد الامين باشا اتس بيوتيفول اند ذا كاربيتس هادو مصنوعين بالايد كلها كلها واو all of them are here. We are an expedition. We ship it Europe, America, everywhere. Nice. It's very nice. 
et pas cher aussi. Merci beaucoup. Et je vous remercie pour le laboratoire. Je vous remercie pour le laboratoire. C'est mon ami, Abdelrahim. Salam. Je vous remercie. Je vous remercie. Je vous remercie. Et donc, c'est ce qu'il y a. 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 وبعد نحط نوع أي نوع من الزهور مثلا ياسمين وأنا ما برد وفي الأسفل نحط النار شغل هذا يومين يدوم بين أربعة وخمسة ساعات يسخن باهي يطلع البخار حتى المكان هذا مع الضغط متاع الماء السخن والماء بارد يتركز هنا بعد يتحول زيوت عطرية ويعبط بالقطرة بالقطرة وبعدين تونس تصدر سبعين في المية من المنتوج هذا تصدر الأوروبا في فرنسا في الجنوب تاع فرنسا في مكان اسمه جراس جراس هذه المكان هذا بالنسبه لاوروبا هو الـ هو الـ 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 دي فوالا هذيك هي يعني المدينه نتاع البيرفون في في اوروبا بعدين يخلطوا بالكحول باش يعملوا به العطورات هذاك علاش في تونس عندنا عندنا كثير كثير بيز نتاع بيرفون زي هذه شمره الديت عمل هيك بس شوي هكا تعرف جادور دو ديور جادور كريستين آه هذا البيز هذاك البيز صح ذيس از ريلي جود ذيس از ذا ايسينشال اويل ميد ويزاوت الكحول يا ويز ديت يس لوك حبيبة شوف شوف without alcohol without chemical product you see pure natural essential oil yeah that's awesome this one right here is a jasmine it's the national flower in Tunisia right yeah exactly ah oh my gosh this is so good ah وهذي هذي green lemon green lemon يستعملوا للمساج مش بيرف من هذا so strong oh very lovely تروي يبي لسانسيل من ده مساج I got myself a, a roll of jasmine essential oil because I actually needed some perfume. I've been thinking about it for a while. Uh, but also because the guy was super helpful and uh, kind, so I was like, why not? Anyway, so um, walked and to make my way back to Masjid Zaytuna. This is the mosque of Zaytuna. It's the most popular mosque here, one of the oldest. It's got a lot of history and it's actually open for visitors. It's open for Muslims and non Muslim. If you're not Muslim, you are allowed into the courtyard, headscarf for women, and uh, you know, appropriate wear for men, usually not shorts. There's a street further out that I want to go check out and show you guys. Made my way back to one of my favorite streets. Like I usually would walk this way, facing uh, Masjid uh, Zaytuna. And then here they do sell a lot of uh, shashia. This is a Tunisian shashia. More shashias right there. And then they do have this place right here called the Jawajim. It's actually um, a Tunisian dessert. It's always very busy. Um, I haven't tried it before, but it looks more like, a, I don't know how to explain it, like maybe a milkshake or yogurt with a lot of nuts and dates. And it looks pretty interesting, but it's just so thick. Beautiful handmade carpets. So this is a super common thing here in the old Medina of Tunis. All of these are baskets or gifts for bridal gifts. So basically uh, for either bridal showers or even for the weddings, they would prepare baskets like this with a, a bunch of gifts and you see like it's nice uh, bridal colors and then they would have trays like this with uh, some sweets, maybe dates, nuts and it's so beautiful. This is one of uh, Islam. This is one of many shops around here. Uh, for spe specifically for that yeah so this these are the baskets they would have baskets like this and you would fill them with the sweets candies nuts uh, these are usually the options some of them are fancier than others common in the, in, the, in the culture in the Middle East North Africa uh, even for proposals uh, if you want to propose to to the person you love or to the bride you have to go to their home and bring something with you so that would usually be in the form of a, a basket like this I actually just read on the sign that it's not just bridal. Some of them are even gifts for kids after young kids when they get circumcised. It's a it's a big it's a big deal, big event. There's usually some celebration going on, and so you can uh, take a basket as a gift. And yeah, back to the mosque of Zaytuna. I'm going to skip. I'm not gonna go in right now. It's just not well equipped for that. I really like these uh, t-shirts with the shashia glasses and moustache, very, very Tunisian. There's a sign right there for a place called the uh, Dar Bilhaj if you make a left. And it's actually a really nice place if you want to go for a nice sit down dinner. And it used to be a house of the of the base, I think, or the governors, and they do have a nice seating area. It's a really nice place if you want to go and have some dinner. And they also have this uh, lunch special for three course meals, about 45 uh, Tunisian dinars, which is really nice. 
this street is so busy. It also doesn't help that it's a Saturday today, uh, but there's this corner right here in the Medina where they sell a lot of sweets. And you can see some of them right here behind me. And the one that I like the most is the makrut. I apologize for the light on, on the camera, it's not so good. But usually, if you want to, to buy some, uh, they're really nice, so they, they hand you a piece or two just to try, sample it, and see if you really like it. Just handing uh, pieces of uh, sweet to everyone to sample, it's really cute. Just got myself a piece. So good. When it's warm, it's 100% better. It's so good, because I've tried it cold, I've tried it warm, and oh my gosh, the flavor when it's warm is oh, just so good. Uh, Tunisia and Algeria, Jazeera, Tunisia and France, Malaysia, uh, uh, Tunisia and Morocco. <laughs> this is a restaurant, El Ali. This is a restaurant that I was recommended by somebody actually from uh, Instagram who's a Tunisian. And I went there for lunch one day. Service was good, it was nice and quiet. I also like this street with old umbrellas. And uh, this is the exit. This is uh, the main square as you leave the Medina. Let me just uh, scooch a little bit further. There's a hotel right there. The fountain, the wood. and there are a bunch of vendors here in the square. There's so much going on. It's pretty busy. Like I said, it's Saturday, and they're selling bread. This is the famous fennel snack, where they just uh, clean up some fennel, add in some lemon juice and salt. It's actually really good and healthy. And out here, they're selling uh, pineapple, coconut. And then I want to show you this spot that I really liked for uh, some bambaluni. Bambaluni is a Tunisian donut. It's very soft, especially when you eat it warm. And then they just uh, uh, add sugar on top of it, sometimes uh, Nutella. But the original one is just sugar. And this is uh, my favorite place, right there. Bambaluni, and you can see that it's so busy. The trick when I'm traveling is if I see a lot of locals, that's a good sign and it's always busy. It's probably one dinar for just the, the original one. The flower man, there it is. When you leave the Medina, this is called, the, this arch right here is called the Bab al Bahar, the gates of the ocean. This big arch right here, there's always a, oh actually, no, I shouldn't go this far because there are, there's usually some uh, uh, police forces um, right uh, in front of it. So it's pretty safe out here. Uh, the police is really doing their job, but I was going to say this is uh, the start of the main street, Shari uh, Habib Burgiba. So if you want to make your way, um, let's say for example, like to Carthage or uh, Sidi Busid, you would want to walk all the way, all the way down on the main street, Habib Burgiba, to make your way to the train station. But yeah, this is uh, the old Medina of Tunis. I'm just gonna make my way back to the hostel to pack up and get ready to leave. And if I see anything interesting on the way, I will be sure to share that with you as well. And I'm trying to make my way to find a very special house that I've been to, and I'm trying to show that to you guys. And it will be pretty interesting, especially for those of you who learned or speak Arabic and are quite familiar with the uh, Arabic culture and literature. I'm very excited for this one. And we are right here. Okay, this looks like a simple, normal house, but this is actually the house where Ibn Khaldun grew up. He is one of the greatest social scientists in the Middle Ages. He was a philosopher, an Arab philosopher, a writer, sociologist, and he was very well respected and known in the Arab world and actually all around the world. Some of his principles were used widely and globally. This is the house where he grew up here in Tunisia. And he went to school because that was uh, in the Middle Ages. So he went to school and he started school at uh, Masjid Zaytuna, the mosque of Zaytuna, the one that I showed you earlier. But yeah, it is right here. 
there's actually a library or librarian with a small library, tiny little library right next to the house of Ibn Khaldun. I actually came here last time and I wanted to grab a book but I didn't have time. So I'm glad I did it right now. I bought uh, this book from him and it's not written by Ibn Khaldun but it's got a collection of uh, memoir from his life and also his experience uh, traveling to Morocco, living in Tunisia and also traveling to Andalusia. And also right here, just to explain this to you, this is also a masjid. في هذا المسجد درس درس المؤرخ العلامة عبد الرحمن بن خلدون. So um, he didn't go straight to Masjid Zaytuna to go to school. So usually he would start in Kutab, smaller uh, community mosque per se, uh, which was right there, right next to his house. And then he taught there. He was a teacher in the Kutab. And then after that he graduated and went to Masjid Zaytuna, which is not too far from here. But I'm really excited to read this on my way today because I have a flight later in the day. But I think I will end up my adventure right here at the house of Ibn Khaldun, one of my favorite Arab sociologists, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!